and and, uh, and the rest from uh, Massachusetts. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Y'all speak that different language for us out here. <laughs> we old rebels. We don't speak like hey, dog. How are you? Where are you from? Boston. No, uh, Cedarville. Ohio. She's one of the two. We have two from Ohio. Oh, you can have different. This is the other one. Why you had a different bro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on back. This one. Yeah. <laughs> come on back. All right. Small, but it's okay. Come on in. First of all, I want to make you welcome to Miss. How long have you been in this city? We got in on Saturday. Oh, well, you've been Just in this couple of days. Welcome to WPR Hardy. And uh, we're always glad to have our young people come in and bring the experience that we didn't have, thank God. Uh, that thing was much better for everybody. And uh, it's always good to have people come <laughs> into our city and see that it's not like it used to be 30, 40, 50 years ago. Terrible in this city was. Mm -hmm. But uh, thanks to a lot of us, it's different now. And uh, just try to welcome people here. Now, I'd like you to ask me questions rather than be talking about it. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about, I brought a group last year, can you just give us a quick, about yourself, what you'd like us to know about you? And uh... I don't know, I, just, I guess what do I say? That I, I, I want you, I just try to make people like me, like I like them, because I'm a human being and, and I'm no different. And uh, maybe because you may know more about me than I know about you, because of the total price that blacks and whites played play to get us to this point. Uh, there, was, there were a lot of whites who died fighting to make get us free. And there were many blacks who died to get us free. And uh, my brother and I, along with Aaron Henry and family and Ham and Vernon and Dame, a few more of us decided that it just wasn't right to be not able to go to the best schools in our state. It wasn't right for us to be able to go and get a drink of water out of a public water fountain. It wasn't right for us not to be able to use the restroom in, in, in public places. It wasn't right for us not to go to restaurants and hotels. It just wasn't right. And after we went to the Army and started in World War II, we came back and saw, what the hell are we fighting for? We can't have it. We decided we're going to change it. And along with some college kids out of uh, New York, California, and Boston uh, University, some came down and they joined us. We began to fight for equality. We couldn't register, we couldn't vote. We, couldn't, we didn't have a single black register, um, single black elected in Mississippi, other than Mount Bayou, until we decided to push. And we became a, a total integration of SNCC, CORE, and the NACP joined hands. And, we, and there were black and white uh, who joined us to help us to fight to make it life better for everybody. And we decided that enough was enough. Racism is a terrible thing. It's a sickness that eats away at you. Makes you nothing. Hate somebody because of the color of his or her skin. Because of their gender. Because maybe they're bisexual or homosexual. Whatever they are. They're human beings. And that's my attitude. I always have. I don't care what you are. I know what I am. And let me be free to be what I am. And that's the main thing that we, we didn't have in this country. And we, our country is always mellow. And try to take care of everybody. What about your own country? I, I'm not having a problem with our and the president. I respect the president. I support him 100%. But I have a problem when we get a health program through for everybody and turn around and hear something. Yeah, not, I'm a Republican sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not true nothing. I'm more than ever. Uh, I have a problem now because our government, you and me, I put my list back here. We spend. We talking about going broke, right? Mm. Our country going broke. You know why? We give. Now this is a touchy point. I don't know why it's touchy. We give Israel four hundred billion dollars a year for their in, for their infrastructure and their defense. We give Pakistan two point three billion dollars. Come on, we give it to them. You know. And, and here we are have suffering, gas going in $5 a gallon. And, 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 and not only that, we give Iraq $280 million a year, every year. And my question to Mr. President is, when you write or your budget, Mr. President, why didn't you include deducting the money we send to other countries and put our own budget instead of raising our taxes and cutting off our, federal, our state pro, our program? So you see, I I, 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 don't know, I don't know who I am. I'm a Republican devil. Don't give a damn, because you know, I'm me. I'm mm -hmm. always there, and I'm going to still fight for us. So it's people like you, young people, going to fight for those kind of things. Ask your senator. Ask your congressman. Why are we giving that kind of money to other countries? Why? They don't give us a cotton picket. Not a dime. In fact, they almost don't hate us. 
So why give it to them? Well, we owe Israel. I, I love most of my friends are Jewish people. They helped us through all that. But so what? How long do you pay for friendship? And my whole thing is they did it because they wanted to. Hell, we didn't, you know, we didn't make them support us. And we appreciate that. But we don't have to keep on taking care of Israel because a few of them stood with us and was beaten. A few of them was killed. Look at the blacks who were killed. Look at the Indians who were killed. So my whole thing to, to, to our country, uh, why do we keep on wasting our money to help somebody who don't give a damn about us? And they don't. Can you imagine Pakistan can't think about America? Do you remember Jordan can't think about America? Do you think uh, we give them, I think, $2 billion a year? Just give it to them every year, not one year now. And the president didn't say a thing in his budget about cutting money there. Not one dime, did he? If I'm lying, I, mean, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm an old country Mississippi boy. So well, I do know that he talking about trying to get rid of health care for your poor grandpeople and my grandpeople. It doesn't make sense. And then you got these old crazy senators from New York and other places talking about we're going to do the Muslims. Well, how are you going to pick on the Muslims? Get those who do wrong. If he's a Muslim, if he's a whatever he is, if he does wrong, put him in jail. But don't just because he's a Muslim, or because he's black, or because he's white, or Irish, or whatever, you're going to start picking on him. It's not right. So that's what I, that's been my fight all these years. Fight for what's right for people, and no one is different than anyone else. We're all God's children, and uh, we should be respected like that. And I don't bite no bones about it. I, uh, I'm so, you see why I'm so crazy. I'm crazy <laughs> like a yacht. And that is because the right is right and wrong is wrong. And I think that our, our, our government meddles too much other folks' business. Somebody called me there. Well, Mr. Evers, I call Steve, call me, man, what, what are you going to do about the, uh, um, over in, um, you know, the hell we're going through now? Uh, hmm. Iraq. No, no, not Iraq. Yeah. Yeah. In, in Libya. I said, what are you going to do? You stay the hell out. That's what you need to do. <laughs> we have no business messing with Libya. Let the Libyan people take care of that. That's their problem. That's not our problem. Then they come help us when they were beating the hell out of us over and ran the Indians off and took all the land. No one came help them, did they? So why should we go over there now? My thing, we have no business in Libya. None. We don't have ours. Why they send our ships anywhere there? Well, going to help to, to rescue them. Rescue what? They must have loved Sadafi because they kept him there 40 some years. And then so <laughs> let them get rid of him. Why would they do it? I don't care how they get rid of him. We don't, I don't think we have a right to go over there. But they're going to send us over if they don't want and start taking care of them. And our country is going down. Because young people like you got to make sure it doesn't go down. You know, I'm 88, so, you know, I, I, that's why I can say what I said. So now you young people, you know, my time has been here and been gone, but I'm still here. But you got to make sure that the young black folks don't get in that black thing here. It's a joke. Don't get hooked up on that black mess here. Because white mess been a joke. You're a people, you're, you're a human being, and you're no different than nobody else. And just remember that. And always, son, make sure you try to save some money out here. Get some money, and people respect money, and then power, political power. If you're broken black, they don't give a damn about you. If you're broken white, they don't care about you. If you're broken in there, who cares about a broke, poor person in this country? No one. So y'all try to have some as you go. Save some money. And when you get old and 80 years old, you want to worry about who's going to pay your rent, who's going to you know, bring you some food. I'm not going to do anything for you. You're able to take care of yourself. And remember, love yourself first. Young men, black men, take care of our women. White boys, take care of our women. Don't disrespect them. Without women, we ain't nothing. Remember that. That's why I'm not married all these years. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I can't handle it. But it's a very important. It's very important. I have nine daughters, six different mothers, but they're all mine. And I'm, you won't know, so I may tell you what kind of joke I've been all these years. I, I don't believe in marriage because I don't believe in lying. I don't know anybody. I never believe that God put me in any one woman. Can you believe that? All the 80 years I've been, and one woman saw that loved me, and I saw one woman I loved. Can you believe that? That's crazy. And so now I said, and, uh, and I take an oath, and I said, I won't take them oath, so I don't, I don't, I don't have no marriage. And all of my mothers, my daughter's mothers knew that, and none of them had to worry about no child support. That's the one of them up there, two of them up there now, I believe. My daughters, and they're all different mothers, but they're mine. They're all ever, and they're born, I adopt them, like that. And they never had to worry about a thing, because that's my job, take care of them. All I'm saying is maybe I'm sort of crazy, but I love the way I am, and I ain't miss nothing. So I'm going to keep on living my life the few years I got left, and uh, that's it. I was in love one time, I think. I said it all the time, though. And the reason why I hate racism, because the young love I love was a young white girl. 
Well, she wasn't white. She's a Filipino. You know, in in this country, if you ain't you either black or you white. And Felicia, and I'll always remember her. Felicia and I loved each other to death, but because of the color of her skin, she, I couldn't bring her home from the Philippines, and I hated it because of racism and bigotry and ignorance and stupidity. And for that reason, I, I've been fighting it every since. That's one reason. The next reason be just wrong. So, Felicia, I don't know what I don't know where she is today. Uh, um, what like during the civil rights when all people were like seem to be fighting against what you believe in, what kept you going? I guess determination, that right, I was right, and they were wrong. Uh, discrimination, so I tell blacks, well, don't become the bigot we, we destroyed. Uh, I don't believe, I don't go to any black caucuses, I don't go to any black nothing. If it's all black, I don't know parts of it. I fought all white thing all my life, and it's just wrong. I believe people, all the, uh, people who believe in the same thing, what race you are, just mingle and mix together. And just because you're black or white, it, 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 I just don't have no parts of it. And I, uh, I guess it's because I wanted to be free and I wanted to have the same thing that everyone else had. And all the way together, you fight for it. Nothing comes free. No race ever been freed because they wanted it. They wanted it because they fought for it. And men and died for it. And in every race, the English ones came over here to be free and first thing they did, re-enslave folks. You know, but uh, we can't do that. And that's why I'm still fighting. Right now, I'm still fighting the government because it's not fair to young people like you to have it go and pay debts that we're going to create by giving to other folks. And now when you come along and get and get grown and get a job, you got to pay all the big taxes because we let let our country borrow money from China. Why the hell we borrow from China make our own money? And I don't understand either. If you make money, how you owe money? How you lose money and you're making your own money? I, I don't understand that. And maybe some of you educated can tell me more about how, where the money come from that we make. If you make it, you got a machine, you'll make it. And then, so how are you going to run out of money you're making? Run out of paper, is that it? Just paper. <laughs> <laughs> Any other question? Go ahead. Yes, sir. How did you feel about when Mega Evers was, um, when Mega Evers was murdered? What was your first, like, thought? What was your reaction? Well, I think it would be like any person who would lose a brother. I, my thing was to go kill all the white folks I could find. <laughs> Just kill them till they kill me. But that wasn't the answer. You know, and now that, that's, the, that's that hate come up in me. Yeah. Then when I realized that, and I came back from Chicago, and at the time I was in Chicago, doing a lot of funny stuff to make money. Yeah. I won't tell you too young to know what I was doing. <laughs> uh, all kinds of things to make money. I had no problem with that uh, at that time. Yeah. And I quit and came home, and I decided, because Megan had made a vow when we were just fighting this thing. If something happened to either one of us, the other would carry on. And I had to do what I promised them. Megan was killed. I came back and took over the NACP. We kept fighting for equal rights of all people, yeah. including white people. Yeah. God knew that if the man who killed Mac had just met him and sat and talked to him, find me, he wouldn't have killed him. Mm -hmm. But he never met him. It was ignorance and stupidity what he'd heard about this mess about if you don't, if you don't uh, uh, stop them niggas, they're going to come and take all your our wives and our daughters. Well, ain't your wife and daughter got something to say about who they want? Yeah. That's my friend. Well, I'm going to take, take either one of young ladies if they don't want me. I'm going to take your mother if she doesn't want me. Come on. But that's, that's how ignorant some white men were. And that's they taught. And then the people like Beck with them, that's that ignorant. Mm. The bleak of that. We're going to take the women. Come on. I'm going to take somebody's woman. Come on, baby. You're going to marry me. That's how stupid they were. <laughs> no, and I didn't want to be that stupid. So, uh, I, was, I had hate in me, but I prayed, and the Lord got, took it out of me. Not to hate, not to kill. I was going to really organize, and I had an organization in Chicago that I was running. I was going to really bring them here and just destroy white people. Because, see, white people don't realize that they are vulnerable. These Mississippi, I don't know about y'all up there. We do a black folk cook for them. Uh-oh. They prepare all the other things they do. We do that. So all we had to do is, at that time, we couldn't get no coffee in the coffee shop. So I was pouring one pot of coffee every day. How many people would, would be dead? Boom, boom, boom. And then they cooked and worked in their homes. Boom, fixed thing in their, in their cars and things. All the, you know, fixed them, the yeah. mechanic. Yeah. You know, it's easy to mess with one of them driving and them steering shacks. Nobody can drive out on the road and kill himself. Or on the other hand, we could just set up thing and, and fool them. Say, hey, there's a nigga down there. Go down there. And we'd be waiting on them and blow their brains out. All the kind of silly things. But we didn't do that because it was wrong. That's what they did to us. And that's why we have survived. And then, and then when like um when 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 that lawyer came up to you 
and 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 we'll see. We watched the movie last night, so yeah. he's going for oh, the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, I, and he may have not. Right, when you heard when you heard about the lawyer, you know what I mean, trying to fight and trying to open up back the case and stuff like that. How, like, you know what I mean? Was it surreal to you or like? What it, I, I appreciate, but I didn't think it could happen. Yeah. I just didn't think it would ever happen. I mean, in Mississippi, yeah. going to reopen the case after 30 years and going to yeah. get some conviction after they turned the record loose twice on all white jury. Yeah. And see, at this time, we just began to vote, though, when, when we started. And that's what, that made a difference. And now we're going to be selected on the jury and this type of thing. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know if it could happen, but I, as I told the Lord, he's, he's out now. Mm-hmm. The Lord, is, do you know he's out? I, oh, is he out of jail now? He's out of jail, but he's in the halfway house. He's still in the halfway house. He's not home yet. Backward? No, 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 Beckworth, the attorney. No, the attorney, the attorney. Oh, we read that oh, last night. You went to jail last January. Is that? He went to jail last January. Is that right? Yeah, but we got him out. He's out. Yeah. And you paid his legal fees. Is that? Right? I mean, or you you paid something? We read in his CNN. Let's discuss that. But we helped him as well. Okay. Yeah, we have to with the legal fees, and we also have to get him out. You know, because he's out now. He's well, he's in a halfway house, and he'll be home. I think within another week or two, mm. free again. But think about he's been disbarred. And he can't practice law no more. But I got to tell us, come on, now, you can do anything. You write a book <laughs> instead of not have to promote it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so that's what we did. But racism is a little sickness. It's a terrible thing. Mm-hmm. It just makes you makes you uncomfortable and, and irresponsible and all that. So that's why I said, black thieves don't become haters. It ain't mm-hmm. worth it. And when a white person does something to you, just look at him or her at the age and say, oh, right, come on, now. you don't need to do that. And shame them. I've had a lot. Of, I get all kinds of threats every day just about something. Somebody tell me, I said, oh, I'll go to hell. <laughs> and like that. And, ah, and not only from whites, from blacks too. You know. I said, well, you better if you bring it, you better not miss. Cause if you miss me, I'm damn sure gonna hit you. And that's kind of crazy. I talk crazy talk. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you gotta listen to this radio show. Oh yeah. <laughs> do you feel uh, 2011? What do you think your brother would feel as far as progress that has been made or uh, not enough? For what? Or, or your own opinion on how far you've come? I think we have two opinions. First of all, we're proud of the ways we've made race relation wide, but we're sick and hurt of the progress that we blacks have not taken advantage of. Mm-hmm. Black on black crime. In, in this town alone last year, young folk, 65 blacks were killed by blacks. Mm-hmm. Not a single white touched the black in this town. And the year before, there was 70 something white in the town. Just black. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, when we came along, we could sit down on our front porches and we could uh, talk to our neighbors and wave at them. We can't do it now because some blacker drive along and shoot in our neighborhoods. So it's a terrible thing. Uh, I don't know what Megan Martin would say. I, I think they would regret giving their life to find this is what we're going to appreciate we're going to get, but it's the thing that happened. But what we're going to have to do is, our girlfriend in Spain, and I uh, came on a go there, we, uh, in Spain, Sebastian? <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, man. I love Sebastian. <laughs> and and, uh, and Saria, too. But anyway, that's that's there. <laughs> but uh, so I go there called Alfred. And, and every once in a while, I just go, go show me what Spain like. In Spain, they got, when you go to jail, you know where we go? Under the jail of under Sebastian. Of underground. Go right down. You never come out of there until they're going to do what they have to do. If you murder someone, then you have a choice. Once you're convicted of murder, you got a choice, uh, Charles. We're going to either find squad, chopping block, or either find squad, chopping block, and hang. Either one you want, which one you want, uh uh-uh, hang him. <laughs> and then have public execution. I like that. So if we're going to hang old Charles Elvis at 2 o'clock when y'all come. And let me tell you something it's very little crime in, in Spain. Very, very little, because those rules are so strict. Until we get something like that here and put fear in the people. See, people don't mind robbing you now. Because they, they get in and make a deal with the lawyer, and make a deal with the jail, and they're out on, out on bail. All that kind of you can't get out on bail there at all. And I, uh, I have a jacket. I think I tell you that every time we're here. Uh, I cherish the jacket I bought in, in Sebastian. So I went in the store, about, I've said about 12 o'clock time. There wasn't nobody there. I said, hello, hello, can I have nobody know? Store wide open, and so I came out and said, "Let me get the hell out of here." I, said, I don't have nobody in here. I came out of the store, walked down the street, and the cop was on the corner, no gun. I said, "Officer, uh, what is the, I went to the store, nobody." He said, "See us the time, see us the time." I said, "See us the time." Everybody home resting, they rest. I said, "But the door no, no locks." So that's just how strict they are, and you have to worry about nobody stealing because you steal to cut your arm off. 
if you steal something, uh, whatever hand you have, that's going now. That's not, you don't hear that much about it. Right? If you steal something in Sebastian, Spain, they cut, whatever hand you use, I'm going to cut off. And then if you're a rapist, mm -hmm. I like this one, I like. If you're a rapist, so, so she tells me. If you rape, if I rape one of the young girls there, oh, they're going to take me, cut my penis off, and give me a stem from, from the urine from and, and then they put a, a sign on me, the rest of my life, I'm a rapist. You walk around the rest of your life. Don't put me in jail. And you know what? You can we have any boy rape somebody over there? Zero, buddy. Because if they do, you know what's going to happen to them. So those kind of things that they have in those countries, and it's, it's good because there's very free, very free over there. At least that's where I feel. Come on. Any other questions? Be free. Fellas, come on. You got no question you want to ask? What do you think of the welfare system? Hate it. Because why? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, what I think the welfare system is a joke. It makes you lazy. It makes you non productive. On the welfare, though, who can't afford somebody who's real sick or old or can't, that's all right. But some able bodied person like me, and because I just come down welfare, I can't get the job, and let him starve. That's my attitude. And a lot, a lot of black hate me for that. I mean that. A lot of whites, too. Why should we take care of some able bodied American? Period. Always some kind of job out there. Man, with what you want, but take what you can get. I don't, I don't really think you're nobody but Charles Evans and my daughter. And they all grown now. So that, 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 so yeah, I hate welfare. It has made us lazy. I mean, black folk. You know, now a lot of black folk. I can't speak white folk, but I'm black. I ain't gonna get on welfare. And get me a check every month. Well, hell, who checking that? That's Charles Evans, taxi pay. Sarah's, Jim, John's back, and you send them home, how much you look at the first and third? Oh, I hate that. Well, that's money that I don't work in the and stay for paying for you to sit home and have a good time and have babies every nine months, all that BS. And I can't go no one. <laughs> what do you want to be remembered for? I, I haven't inspired. I just want to remember the man. His word was his bond. If he said it, he meant it. And he meant what he said. That's all I want to know. I must have a thousand plaques and they don't mean nothing. Because it's the person, him or herself, that counts. And when you live here, if you never see me in the moms, you know, I remember that old man when I went down there, and this is what he said, so and so, and you remember, just keep remembering that. And see what part of it can you play. Do unto others, have them do unto you, that's the main thing. And young men don't ever abuse young women. Please. Of all my doing, I've never done that to a woman. I don't do that. Get to that point, back off. So don't do that in the hell, son. And what, you know, don't you let nobody beat up on you here. I see all these silly white women on the team. He beat me up, and black ones too. And he's running back to him. But come on. How he going to beat you up and you going to go back? How can you love somebody that's beating up on you? It's crazy. That's Elvis' fear. I don't know about nobody else's fear. That's mine. So no, I, I don't. I have nothing to be remembered. Just, I was here, and I came, and I saw, and I went, and I was gone. What's your what's your advice for for us? You know what I mean in the in the racism stuff like that. What's your advice for us? To I think do? it's very simple. Do unto others what they're doing to you. No, I do it. They want them to feel way about them you, as they want them to feel about you. Treat them right and respect mm -hmm. them. They are white friends. You gotta stop doing the talk. Do the walk. You know, that many of you will go to school together, but none of us can go visit you at your home. None of us can visit you in your churches. Now you visit you in, in your private, in your so-called social organization. Invite them sometime. Now, I'm, I'm in that, that, that nut now. You know, got, got, got some nut blacks, like got some nut whites. But some young, your classmate, regardless. Uh, invite them occasionally. Uh, if you have a boyfriend or girlfriend that's white, don't be ashamed. And, and let people care him or her wherever you want to go. And let them become more and more involved in who he is or who she is. That's, that's my attitude about it. And uh, like I said, my girlfriend in Spain, I have, I show, I bring her in a minute. I have no problem with my, with my daughter at all. So well, that's not your business. And none of my friends like him. If he has some problem, so oh, you got a problem. I ain't got no problem. <laughs> 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 and, and that's what, that's what you got to do. Just be fair and straight with everybody. And main thing, get your churches open up. And then stop talking that talk. And then everything is little quieter. Uh, uh, when you go out of that church, then they go this way. And no blacks or no old Reynolds and nobody's there, but just people look like you. It's not right. And that's what I think about his dad. His dad's so wonderful about that. He's done so much to bring us together. And he still does. Look at all of you here now. <laughs> because of him. <laughs>
and there's a wonderful man. We, we go way back. But uh, he just steady she go. He doesn't get involved in all this white or black thing. He just he believes in the Lord as people. And he's shown that. Look at you. And he brings to come every year, two or three times a year, mixed groups. And I appreciate that. And that's why I came back in. You know, I don't usually come back in, I start out. <laughs> I went and get some fried green tomatoes. I love fried green tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's why I would hit it. She, she doesn't close at 6 o'clock. She'll wait for me. <laughs> I eat regularly. And I, and I tip good, son. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Nanny. Ask me if you want to ask There's a question. Oh. What do you think about the parade when they have those little, young, little eight, nine year old girls out there? Well, mine could do that. Yeah, I'm talking about that, that booty show. What do you call it? The booty? Give them all that stuff. No, my, my daughter couldn't do that. Now, I, I, like I said, I wasn't married to the mothers, but I had rules. And that my daughters could not be exposed to their bodies like that. I just wouldn't let it. Because it does, at this day and time, it, it's even worse. Because you got some old sorry man out there just watching them. Yeah. And some old vulture would, would do anything to take advantage of them. Anytime this bastard up in Kent raped this five year old child. Five year old, can you believe that? And so you got those kind of people out there. Then you can't, shouldn't expose your daughters. I wouldn't do it. My daughter couldn't do that. I have a problem with those. That's, that's their daughter, and they, and they they look cute. But if that, if that if that if that was all to it, it'd be all right. But it's gonna go farther than that. And the little girls now, they look like little women, mother. Little buses way out there. Little 12, 13 year old girls look like little 18, 19, 20 year old women. And you know, you, your high school kids are, are look just like. When I came along, like a little woman would look, but not then. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's sad. I think the families have a problem with it. They should have a problem with it. But the sad over there, babies having babies now. So how do they train a baby when they haven't been trained? So that's it. When I came along, if a young girl got pregnant, oh, Lord, she's, good Lord, have mercy. She talk to the community, disgraced. So they, they just didn't get pregnant because they just wouldn't allow it. As much as we, we, we thought we wanted sex, you better not. No. So, uh, Kayla had a question. Uh, sure. um, I was going to ask you, like, during the civil rights movement, do you remember what, like, your favorite, like, accomplishment would have been, like, after, like, everything that you went through, if you can think of it? I think the most important thing is we got the right to vote. <laughs> we got a chance to vote. We knew then thing would change. And the next thing we got, when white people began, got more involved in the movement, like you, not just you, but I'm mean, saying people like you came from all over and said, this is wrong. And they began to associate with us and be around with us and go places. That became to open up things for us here. And <coughs> like now, we, we, we can go anywhere with any of you. Nothing beats like any one of you can go out there with anybody. Nobody thinking about it. Just, hey. But, but <laughs> say 40 years ago, 50 years ago, you couldn't do that. You'd be called a nigger lover, and then the person next day, they'd be scorning you and all that kind of stuff. But that's gone. The thing that we accomplished to where we are today where people will accept us, most of what we are. That's why I, I tell black people, you gotta be somebody. You can't just be making excuses because I'm black, or I'm a Negro, or I'm whatever, I'm African American. Uh, you gotta prove that you're equal to anyone else, not above nobody, but you're equal to anyone else. And they'll accept you. They begin to, slowly, it's slowly all over. You know, I, I look at all them liberals on, on, on NBC and NBC, and they're talking about Fox News. I, I said, you talk the talk. Or do you walk the walk? I don't see very few got black on your staff. But you, but you talk about uh, oh, Sean, what are you, Hannigan, Sean, Sean, Sean and Hannigan. all them talk about them. But sure, they, but but they they say what they feel. But you talk one thing and do and act just like they do. Look at all these big corporations. How many of them got blacks involved from the top level down? You talk about my governor, Governor Haley Barber. But this day, I tell you what, try to get to see him. Guess who you got to go through? Two blacks. Before you get up on the 19th floor, the black girl lets you in, and a black man. When you get up on the 19th floor, we get off. A black woman has to check you out what you want. But you, but you don't, you don't have anything about that. And, and, and you know, all you hear is, and then the penitentiary that's owned by the Philippine up in Yazoo. This is where we have all his own. It's his land, the governor's land. Every one of them there, from the from the direct on down, is black. But you don't hear that. All you hear is that he said, uh, uh, compared the Ku Klux Klan with the Silicon Valley, he made a stupid statement. It was stupid. But he said what he thought he knew, but he didn't he was saying it the wrong way. But Mississippi, 
fighting. Let me say this about my folks here now. They're all my folks. There are no more prayers than there are in New York or in Boston. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll say it again to you. Mm -hmm. There are no more prayers than here they are in New York or Boston. The Kennedy and I were just like that. I guess most of you have heard of that. Robert Kennedy. He was good friends with Robert Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Kennedy is period. I used to go to high school whenever I got ready. But old Joe Kennedy was just as crazy as the son of the Mississippi White. Old man Kennedy. But the boys and them, they changed it. Read it, but look it up. You'll see. And Sammy Davis, and, and Sam, Sammy Davis is the one who helped to change old Joe. But Frank Sinatra is really the one who changed him. Because when President Kennedy ran for president, Frank, no, he wanted Frank to come along with his group. And Joe Kennedy didn't want him to come because of Sammy. And Frank told him, if Sammy can't come, we're not coming. And then it's when John and Bobby began to get on their dad about it. So I'm saying, so it's just prejudice has been all over. It's just a terrible, it's a sickness. It's an ignorance. Don't know them. Just, just don't know nobody. And to know somebody, then you get to respect them for what they are and who they are. Ask me anything you want to ask me. That's some problem? Uh, some uh, raccoons up yeah, above you. Yeah, we're going to get it. No way. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get him out of my face. But he lives up there. Let him rest. <laughs> He's not going to bother nobody. <laughs> Someone else have a question? I have a question. Athena. Yes, dear. Um, how, what were you thinking and feeling when you saw um, a black person run for president? And did you think that uh, if he did a poor job, it would make... Uh, the U.S. sort of regress um, when it came to like civil rights, or did you think we were in uh, that we are in a position where even if he does a poor job, like we can still like proceed in a positive direction? First of all, I was proud. I never dreamed I'd see a black man president. I never thought I would see it during my time that a black man would be elected president in this crazy racist country. And I'm proud to know that it was because Jesse, Jack, when he ran, he wasn't ready. We don't need no preacher to be president. <laughs> then you got church and government mixed in it again. <laughs> and then Jesse was more, was too far to the what is it, left. What is it? He's too far for black folks. You can't be for black folks or white folks. You got to be for the people of this country. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm so impressed with President Obama. I'm proud of him and I'm proud that and he's done a heck of a job. And he does, who could do, when do you do bad as a president? If your Congress and your Senate and your judicial system that helps to make a president good or bad. They're fighting them all the way, most of them, for us Republicans, not me. I'm the only Republican that supported my guest, and I fight them all the time. I'm on the executive committee here in Mississippi, and I just be raising hell with them all the time about President Obama. But uh, <laughs> he's done a good job. He's trying to include what I love about him. He never go out of the way to do for black folks, or out of the way to do for white folks. He died to do what's best for folks in this country, and I love that about him. Uh, he could either, I know it's his, his cabinet. I got a little problem. He'll have a few more of us up in the cabinet. I, I need to be up one, two of me up at close terms. So like, hey, 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 do this to him. You know, once in a while, I didn't draw back. Don't hit him hard, just jab him a little bit. You have no more than in charge. But he won't do that. And, and he's just a wonderful president. And I don't know how any white person could not like President Obama. I, I, any person, period. Because a man is just genuine. Hey, even Russ Lombard, Russ probably like he talked that Yang, but he probably like him. <laughs> yeah. I don't crazy no? Because he's respectful. And he's so intelligent and so smart. That's what I love about it. I don't like dummies. I don't care what color you are. And President Obama is a smart young man. So, so you said you don't, you, you know what I mean, you don't like to have all black things and all, no. you don't like to associate with things. But what is your thoughts about Black History Month? It's a joke. It's a joke. And then, and oh, then, hold on, wait, yeah, got it. Black History Month, what, one month? What about the other 11 months? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what about the other 11 months? Are they all be white months? <laughs> <laughs> it's questionable well, what I think about Black History Month because it's a joke. We don't need that. We need, a, we need America. We need months for all of us. Yeah. And, and, okay, oh, it's have, I, I take you it's We have a, a White History Month. White folks month, what'd you say? Come on. <laughs> what'd you say? I'm just showing. You wouldn't like it, would you? Oh. If we go have a white we go so we have a white folks month, what would you say? Uh huh. See that's something what would you say? I just praise God. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's the same thing. <laughs> 
Uh, are you going to be a preacher? <laughs> yeah, I'm studying to be a pastor. Yeah. Pastor? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> 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 you want to be fine. We got enough preachers in this country. <laughs> but seriously, though, no, I, I don't particularly think we don't have a black history because I, I don't hardly speak about it but because they say I'm so different. But why have a black history? The point of fact was that I don't have a white history. That's, that's my, you know. I'm funny about what I say to you, do I want you to say it to me? That's my problem. Yeah. And I think President Obama is the same way. Uh, and there might have been a time when we needed to have that, maybe. But we don't need that now. We need a, we need a, a, a month set aside to, to respect people for what they are, who they are. And what they are. Yes, Don? Do you think they have a Black History Month because Black History isn't talked about much in the history books? That's possibly, but you know what that is? We got black superintendents now, we got black boards of education, put it in the damn book. Yeah. So, you know, we got black elected officials, congressmen, put it in the book so everybody know about what, what that's true. You know, that's come true. on. You know, do, do, you, do you have a, you don't have a, I don't know if I said, well, we're going to have a Chinese uh, day, month. But the Chinamen respect Chinamen. And if we do that, we can automatically be respected. We got to learn to respect ourselves. See, why we don't respect, you know why we don't respect them? We don't respect ourselves. Do you ever see, hardly ever see, you, you're a preacher, so you would know. But, <laughs> in, but in the, I, I'm in the club, I'm a nightclub, and very seldom do you ever hear of a white person beating on his wife or his woman in the club. You may take it home and beat the hell out of them. I'm waiting to do it home. But we, as a real company, call our wives and our women, all kind, in before everybody else, disrespecting them. And we got to stop that. We got to learn respect and support each other publicly and demand other folks respect. That's why we got to do that. And that's what I try to do, you know, and, and somebody, hey, old nigga, I say, hey, old peckerwood. <laughs> <laughs> hey, old cracker. I don't get mad about it. You call me a nigga, I call me a peckerwood. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that's what, then they're, they're shut up once, right quick. <laughs> so, but if you go get mad, you call me a nigga. And no, I'm getting mad. I'm like, hey, you got, and I do it all the time. <laughs> yeah, they used to, they don't do it no more if they, they call me. So I tell people all the time, don't get mad, get smart. You know, and get even. By like saying, where did they call you come? So where are you or something? Well, that's not where you old fat crack or slob you. <laughs> uh -oh, you know, I are you old Polak? Uh, you know, are you old what would they call Jewish people? No way. They call Jewish people. They call them something, what? They call them something though. Anyway, they call Friends. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> some people call them something called Derogatory, right? I, mean, I said, find that real name they don't like you to call, and call them that. They call you that. That's all. And, and you'd be surprised or stuff. It really, it, it's just, no one likes to be slapped with the same thing again. And that's why I said, black people, honey, we got to get to where we show our love for each other and, and our respect. And let white people know, because we move in your neighborhood, it ain't going to change the damn thing. It's going to be better. White people think we move in the neighborhood, it's gonna go down. We got food, it's not gonna go down. We're gonna keep the same level. And white people got no sense. And we have a, in our neighborhood now, you gotta have, everybody gotta have a black phone. Now you can't live unless you have, when they ever gotta have a black phone. But now I'm, I'm coming, I ain't gonna have no black, you can't live in our neighborhood. Just that simple. I'm that simple. So the neighborhood has got certain rules and regulations. And why white people run and move when black people move in? Including Boston. Mm -hmm. It run like scats, run like rabbits when, when black folks start moving into uh, to certain parts of Boston. You run over to some other way. Then you stay there and have rules and then come on in. But you can't come in here barbecuing you're in your front yard. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't come in sitting on the corner and drinking and clowning. We don't like it in our neighborhood. But nobody. Well, I can't. Then you stay out of here. Okay, what color you are? But see, when we run off and leave them, man, then they, got, they bring the, whatever they had on there and they bring it on there with them. So, we all have a part to play, and white people got a heck of a part to play in making things better <coughs> than what they were when they weren't good for us. Can you tell us one or two things white people should, some advice you'd give to the white students and white yeah, people first, to help? Yeah, I have done it now, I think. First of all, associate with them, but know how far to go. Mm. And, and know how far to go, and, and know how far you want them to go with you. That's the first thing you do. And, and treat them like you want to be treated. Invite them to your home. 
though you know that's his face. Maybe his leg will come in there with his pants crossed behind and cut him like that. You don't want to bite him. Let the hell out. You don't need him. <laughs> <laughs> come with his pants wearing out cross here. You don't, you don't want to bite that. And all the hair flat. I don't like that. I, you know, I don't like the men right. So that you don't want. Same with a young lady. You know, a young black woman. You can buy any. Uh, let me tell you what happened to me right quick. My daughter, she was, you'll see a picture if you're looking. She was going to Murrow High School. You know. I came in one day, and I was married for a little while. I didn't last no time. I married a little while. And I came, she said, Dad, I want you to meet my friend. Okay. So when I came in, I put him in, I came in, and guess what, a young white boy, and I like to choke. I couldn't believe that Charles Evans couldn't accept a white boy that my daughter told me this is my friend. So I had to guess. I said, hi, son, how are you? And I had to start shaking. And he said, I'm fine, Mr. Evans. And he said, me and she had a good friend, Sam. So I said, okay, and I went up, went up in the room. Lord help me now. So he help me. I talked to the Lord real fast. I ain't never had him like this before. I'm trying to show how deep pressure has been in all of us. And for no, my daughter that was a white boy told me that's her friend in my house. I could not take it. But I, find, I got over it and I came back down. And from then on, I said, come on, Charles. You talk that talk, you got to walk the walk. Mm -hmm. And one more time with me, I was coming out of Chicago. Got on a, on, a, on a Delta flight. And a black man was sitting on the left side of the plane. You know, you know what that is? That's pilot. I said, there's a black man coming back on the door from in Mississippi. And mine is a terrible thing. I've done been so conditioned that black folk can't do what everybody do. I didn't think this black man, how crazy could I be? He, if, he, if he in that, he must be gonna earn what? The right to fly a plane. And if he gonna fly, he's not gonna kill himself, so why couldn't he fly me and the rest of the way <laughs> down to Mississippi? Yeah. But I'm sure how crazy this stuff has been to us. Yeah. And how even to the best of us, how we had to get over it. But you got to pray and work hard at it. It's going to take time to accept white people. White people accept us, but we got to work at it. And y'all got to do it. Them old ones ain't going to do it. Hell, we old, we old dog and old people, we ain't going to change. <laughs> y'all got to change it. And you can change it. And and sometimes mother going to go, are you bringing that? She said, don't say that, mama. You said, this is my friend. And then mother will nestle down and swallow. But remember, you are mother and father's children. They ain't going to turn against you. But you got to do it, and you got to start doing it now, and in your homes, and in your schools, and wherever you are. Just treat like you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. The main thing, remember how do you want to be treated. And if you're going to be a preacher, do unto others, and you'll have them do unto you. Yeah. Remember that now, Reverend. All right. well, thank you so much. We don't want to take any more of your time. Do you have time for a, a picture? Can we get a picture with you? We don't want the fried green tomatoes store oh, to close. Be there. She knows I'm a good tip, I say. <laughs> All, right. No All right. Any Final question before we get a picture. Anybody? No one. What about what about the um, different like you know I mean white versus white and black dating? I like her. My my girlfriend's white as white as anyone. It looks all like her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying she's about her color, the <laughs> And the girl in, in Spain, you don't know what she looks like. See, uh -oh. she's white than any of y'all. <laughs> so I have no problem with that. I have no problem at all. None. And, and I think Saria loves me. And you know and. and her thing, I won't marry her. That's her problem with me. I won't marry her because I just don't believe in marriage. I said earlier, it's a joke. <laughs> Any other questions before we get a picture? Uh, all right, let's uh, let's get, if we can stand behind you, uh, Mr. Sure. Everett.